Rockets are some of the most complex creations ever achieved by humanity. Lots of math, chemistry, physics, engineering tolerances, you name it. Yet, Elon Musk just declared SpaceX Starship Factory to build up to five mega rockets in 2023, which is really shocking all the others. But can this plan come true? Let's analyze everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On January 14th, Elon Musk shared the company has plans to build about five full stacks of Starship in 2023. Now, this is certainly a bold plan, and let's talk about the Starship scale. The launch vehicle is undergoing development at the Starbase facility located in Boca Chica, Texas. Starship is composed of two stages, a spacecraft that's propelled to orbit by a super heavy rocket which is powered by 33 methane-fueled Raptor V2 engines. Impressively, when fully stacked, it's 390 feet high, which is taller than the U.S. Statue of Liberty. Starship is destined to become the world's most powerful, fully reusable rocket. According to Musk, SpaceX aims to build about five full stacks this year, translating to five flight-worthy Starships and five Super Heavy Boosters. In 2022, SpaceX finished Booster 7 and built Booster 8, Booster 9, and most of the Booster 10. Booster 8 was almost immediately relegated to the retirement yard. Booster 9, featuring some significant design changes, completed a limited amount of proof testing and returned to the factory in early January, likely for Raptor engine installation. The fate of Booster 10? Well, that's unclear, but it stands as a prime example of how fast SpaceX can actually build massive Starship hardware when conditions are right. SpaceX began stacking B-10 in late October of 2022, and the vehicle's just two stacks away from full height three months later. In that same period, SpaceX finished an immediately retired Starship S-22, finished and began testing Ship 24, finished and began testing Ship 25, and finished stacking Ship 26. Booster 9's upgrades partially insulated from the most disappointing possible scenario, retirement before the flight. Even if Booster 7 fails during pre-launch testing or its launch attempt, revealing major design flaws, it's possible Booster 9's changes have already addressed those weaknesses, allowing it to continue the flight test campaign. In talking about Ship 25's fate, on January 17th, SpaceX lifted this prototype on the Starbase's only Starship static fire test stand, further confirming that Ship 25 proof testing went to plan. If Ship 25 were to skip those preliminary tests and immediately conduct a six-engine static fire, there's your sign that SpaceX is significantly more confident in the current Starship design. In 2022, SpaceX ultimately produced two full stacks, with a third, S26B10, likely to be completed, albeit with a less certain fate, in early 2023. Delivering five full stacks this year, meaning five ships and five boosters that make it far enough to be paired with another and fully stacked, that would be a major improvement. However, as was the case in 2022, high-volume production will remain a risky proposition until the designs of the vehicles being built have been fully qualified. Given how long it takes SpaceX to partially qualify Super Heavy Booster 7, it appears that the largest source of uncertainty will remain for another month or two, if not well into mid-year. Starship production has many uncertainties of its own, and all of them are complicated by not knowing if a Super Heavy booster will be available to launch each new ship in a timely fashion. Ultimately, an entirely different constraint means that five full stacks may be all SpaceX needs to build for the next 12 plus months. After a long and painful process, the FAA completed the environmental review of SpaceX's Starbase Texas facility, permitting a maximum of five orbital full stack Starship launches per year. Starship's FAA Orbital Launch License, which has yet to be granted, could even be more restrictive. A second Starship pad under construction in Florida is unlikely to be cleared for orbital launches until Starship has proven itself to be moderately safe in South Texas, which could easily take 12 to 18 months, if not longer. Combined with the fact that no super heavy lift rocket in history has flown five times in its first year of launch activity, a trend Starship seems unlikely to break. SpaceX could practically halt production entirely in 2023 and still have a full year of testing ahead while only using ships 24 through 26 and boosters 7, 9, and 10. 
Unintuitively, that bodes well for a busy 2023 of Starship test flights, as much of the hardware required for three-flight test is already close to completion or almost ready to begin pre-flight testing. After all, SpaceX is leaving other space entities with a great distance. Let's compare to NASA and the SLS. Development of SLS started way back in 2011 as the replacement for the retired space shuttle, as well as the canceled Ares-1 and Ares-5 launch vehicles. Now keep in mind that as a shuttle-derived vehicle, the SLS reused hardware from the space shuttle program, including the solid rocket booster and the RS-25 first stage engines. An original flight date of late 2016 was delayed by about six years. The SLS program has attracted criticism for such delays, its high cost, and non-competitive use of space shuttle components and contractors. While the first SLS for Artemis I tested flight in fall of 2022, NASA and Boeing are constructing the next three. That would be for Artemis II, III, and IV, but it won't go fast. Boeing stated in July 2021 that while COVID-19 pandemics had affected their suppliers and schedules, delaying parts and needs for hydraulics, they would be able to provide the Artemis II SLS core stage per NASA schedule with months to spare. The Artemis II forward skirt, which is the foremost component of the core stage, was affixed to the liquid oxygen tank in late May 2021. As of July 2022, the complete core stage is set to ship to NASA. That would be in March of 2023. For Artemis III, the assembly of elements of the thrust structure began at Machout Assembly Facility in early 2021. The liquid hydrogen tank that's to be used on Artemis III was originally planned to be the Artemis I tank, but it was set aside because welds were found to be faulty. Repair techniques were developed and the tank had re-entered production and will be proof tested for strength for use on Artemis III. Too long and too expensive, even former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, who oversaw the initial design and development of the SLS, also criticized that the SLS will go away because at some point commercial entities are going to catch up. Bolden further stated, they are really going to build a heavy lift launch vehicle sort of like SLS that they will be able to fly for a much cheaper price than NASA can do SLS. That's just the way it works. Finally, you're also probably thinking about Blue Origin's New Glenn. New Glenn is a heavy lift orbital launch vehicle in development by Blue Origin. Design work on the vehicle started in 2012. But it wasn't until February 2022 that Blue Origin completed a crucial test of the payload fairing of that upcoming New Glenn rocket at NASA's Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio. As you may know, the fairing is perhaps the simplest large assembly of any orbital launch vehicle, and Blue Origin has yet to reveal any evidence of work on an integrated booster or upper stage test hardware. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.